If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, totally different video today. We're going to react to Anonymous with their latest video, A Message to Israel. The truth may shock you. This video is a direct recommendation of a patron of mine. So guys, consider supporting this channel via Patreon. You can find the link in the description box below. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. This is the holy war that sane people have feared and zealots have prayed for. They want you to pick a side and each other. But we can always choose peace. The word Israel was first presented in the Bible as a name given to Jacob after he fought an angel. Yeah, it's always commandable to choose peace, but who are we to choose peace? Palestine has been occupied for over 70 years by now. And of course, the people of Palestine that have been oppressed, have been slaughtered, want nothing more than peace. So if we could just snap our fingers and hoo hoo, now everybody has peace, we would do it, of course. But as you know, for peace to exist, sometimes you need war. The word Israel was first presented in the Bible as a name given to Jacob after he fought an angel. Its meaning was a man who has struggled with God and is commonly translated as God prevails. Yeah, here you have it. This is absolutely fantastic. This comes from the Christian Disciples Church Online. So this is a Christian source, needless to say. Anthropomorphism in relation to Yahweh. I assume they use this anthropomorphism to justify Jesus being God, of course. We can read... Kugel points to the fact that in the world of the Bible, God made himself visible to men in one way or another. He mentions the interesting ancient suggestion that the name Israel means a man seeing God from the Hebrew Israel. So there you have it. Anthropomorphism is found within the Bible, within the Jewish Bible as well. Christianity and Judaism anthropomorphize God. This is what it is. Back in the day when I got interested in Islam, after a while I realized, hmm, Islam is actually a very monotheistic religion. Then I later came to the conclusion, actually, Islam is the only monotheistic religion. None of this truly describes Islam. Islam is not only one of the monotheistic religions or the most monotheistic religion. No, Islam is monotheism. Or man seeing God. Many have argued that the word Israel in the Bible does not refer to a place but rather a believer or a group of believers in God. Others believe the land known as Palestine was where the biblical state of Israel once stood. And in the 17th century, Sabbatai Zevi was the first Jew to try and resettle there. Sabbatai Zevi claimed to be the Messiah and amassed a large Jewish following that engaged in ritual and the defilement of God's law. In the spring of yeah. 1660. So now I have to censor myself as always here on this platform. And if I go completely off the rails, then we have to re-upload it onto Rumble yet again. But the point of the story is, of course, that ritualistic was common within many communities worldwide. And guess what? That led to the amongst other ritualistic quote-unquote practices. Six, they were planning to be the first Jewish settlement in Palestine. But things changed when Sabbatai was arrested and thrown in jail. His radical oh, movement continued with the Frankism movement. Strange. And Zionism became more political. Although they claimed to be secular, the Zionists flooded the temples with prayers for a return to Zion and a restoration of the Jewish state. But the rabbis rejected child, them. Ultimately. In 1885, it's a the rabbis state wrote that we consider ourselves a no longer a nation, but a religious religion. community. And we therefore expect neither a return to Palestine, nor a sacrificial worship under the sons of Aaron, nor the restoration of any of the laws. While the rabbis offered no support, the Zionists garnered the support of the British crown as early as 1841. And they were funded by the Rothschild banking dynasty, yes. otherwise known as the Bank of England. Under Churchill. So the crown was likely involved from the start. So yet again, we have to be very careful here, especially with names such as the Rothschild. If you look into the Rothschild family, you will see first and foremost 
who they are, what their background is. This is all I'm going to say over here and how they've been involved in the creation of Israel. Please look it up in your own time. Take five minutes off your day. Google it by yourself and you will see what kind of dark occult influence went into the creation of the state of Israel. In 1897, the political intent to recreate the state of Israel was made official to the public. And in 1917, under the British government's Balfour Declaration, British troops That's seized British control one. of Palestine on behalf of the Zionists. In 1922, the League of Nations adopted the declaration. And in 1947, the United Nations granted parts of Palestine to the Zionists. Yes, all of this conveniently after the Second World War, after... <laughs> the creation of Israel. In, in 1949, Palestinians were made refugees and kicked out of the homes of their ancestors. Yep. Hundreds of there villages were destroyed and thousands of Palestinians were murdered in a series of massacres known as the Nakba. The Zionists Palestinian Muslims, Christians, and Jews. Yes, yet again, and this is why this is an ethnic cleansing, of course, because if you look into Palestine, no, it's not only Muslims, no, but Palestinian Christians and Jews as well. This is an ethnocentric attack, a genocide on the Palestinian people, not only Muslims. Zionists claimed to be non-religious, but they were mostly Ashkenazi Jews. The Ashkenazi can be Europeans. traced back to the Khazars, the exactly. progenitors of rabbinic Judaism. Yep. The Khazar Khaganate was a major empire in what is now Ukraine, Georgia, exactly. Armenia, Azerbaijan, and parts of Russia, yep. Turkey, and Iran. It and was ruled by the Poland Khazars, well. but made up of several diverse nomadic tribes. In the year 740, the Khazars mass converted to Judaism. Synagogues and schools were built, and rabbinic Judaism was born. The original Jerusalem Talmud this was replaced way too by the recently YouTube, codified no Babylonian Talmud, which was based on Babylonian philosophy and became the mainstream, thanks to the Khazars and the Zionists. Some Christians believe that this is the synagogue of Satan written about in the Bible, which yep. say they are Jews and are not. And many other Christians have become Zionists themselves. <laughs> many, 90% Zion of Zionists are actually American Christians. ...have tremendous support from American megachurches and Christian evangelicals. Exactly right. Many of whom believe that as the world becomes a fiery hell, they will be saved and brought to an eternal paradise. But in order for this to happen... And this is why Christians are nothing but a lab dog of Israel. They're doing the fighting for them. As I said, 90% of American Christians are actually Zionists. They're in full support of Israel. And they are against the bad, bad Muslims. Go and kill those terrorists. This is the American rhetoric. It is absolutely hysterical. I said it multiple times here. How can you team up? with a group of people that hates your God. They tell you that Jesus is boiling in semen and excrement. They absolutely hate your religion. Muslims, on the other hand, say that Jesus is the Messiah, that he's been born of a miraculous birth from the Virgin Mary. But you're not going to team up with those guys. No, they deny that Jesus is God. Yeah, and the Jews do not. The Temple of That's Solomon amazing. must be rebuilt, and two-thirds of the it? Jewish people must perish. According to the Bible, King Solomon's temple was constructed in 957 BC and destroyed in 586 BC, rebuilt again in 516 BC and destroyed again in the year 70 AD. Many Christians and Jews believe that this temple must be rebuilt in order for their Messiah to come. Exactly. But there is something Once in its built, way. Originally built near the end of the 7th century, the Al-Aqsa Mosque is considered one of the three holiest sites in Islam. Islam teaches that this is where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. The Temple Mount has been occupied by Israel ever since the Six-Day War of 1967, and now it looks like they are ready to complete their mission. This is the holy war that sane people have feared and zealots have prayed for. They want you to pick a side and kill each other. But we can always choose peace and learn to love our neighbors. The origin of Friday the 13th... Great. But I pick a side. I stand with Palestine. ...our neighbors. The origin of Friday the 13th has its roots in the ongoing Holy War, also. specifically Friday the 13th in October, which is noteworthy seeing as how a worldwide Islamic Jihad has been called for on Friday the 13th in October. 
The Knights Templar okay. gained wealth and power by fighting as mercenaries for the Catholic Church during the Crusades. Their headquarters was in the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the no Temple way. Mount in That's Jerusalem, crazy. I didn't know this. on Mount Moriah, where Abraham built an altar to sacrifice his son. King Solomon's temple is a central component of all three Abrahamic religions, and especially in Western occultism. The Templars were officially known as the Poor Fellow Soldiers of Christ and of the Temple of Solomon, or Templar Knights. Masonic lodges are based on the Temple of Solomon. Kabbalah teaches that the Temple of Solomon represents the metaphysical world and the descending light of the Creator through the Tree of Life. The Templar Knights wore white mantles with a red cross, a symbology that can be found throughout the history of the Catholic Church and its offshoots. Yes, yes this is nothing new at all ends up in Britain, the Anglo-Saxons. Saxony is a province in Germany. People say as well that within Germany the Illuminati has been founded and then later on migrated into Britain. It all comes from there. That's why all of those colonization projects have a much, much deeper root, of course. Even if you look into Saudi and what happened with Wahhabi, the British Empire had their hands within that as well. Solomon's temple is a crucial goal of many religious groups and secret societies. Yep. The Templars were not only expert warriors, they were also pioneers in an early form of banking, and arguably one of the world's first multinational corporations. They acquired land throughout Europe and the Middle East, including the island of Cyprus. They owned and operated several farms and vineyards, they built massive stone cathedrals, and they had their own fleet of ships for war and for the import-export business. When Jerusalem was recaptured by Muslim forces in 1187, the Templars were forced to leave the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount, but they still managed many businesses and wielded much power. King Philip IV was deeply in debt to the Templars and began pressuring the church to take action against them. At dawn on Friday the 13th of October 1307, mass arrests were carried out against the Templars. Claims were made that the Templar recruits were forced to spit on the cross and deny Christ. Yeah, it's the same principle with the Freemasons. Of course, first the prerequisite to enter the Freemasons is that you have to believe in God. But then further down the steps, at some point you have to denounce the real God, of course, and you have to worship Satan. Accused of worshiping Baphomet and a mummified head yep. believed to be that of John the Baptist. Dozens of Templars were burned at the stake and the order was officially dissolved. The Temple Mount remained under control of Muslim forces until the British captured it in the Battle of 1917. The British? Thirty years later, the United Nations gave the land surrounding the Temple Mount to the Zionists. And the state of Israel has been encroaching upon it ever since. All right, this is it for today's video. I had to bite my tongue, as always, even for Rumble. I'm very, very careful nowadays what I say online, because it can and will be used against you. I'm just going to say that this video was very informative. There was a thing or two that I did not know. However, there was a big chunk missing, of course. There was a big chunk missing, which is the Second World War. You have to research yourself what happened during the time of the World War, and you have to research as well what the issue was with in Germany. The video mentioned the banking system, for example. Look But yet again, I really have to bite my tongue. I cannot say what I'm thinking right now. So this becomes very, very tiresome. Guys, I said it as well previously here on this channel. I'm going to continue. I'm going to do whatever I have to do here on this channel to stay online, to stay on this platform and promote Islam. Inshallah, I will be able to do this. However, it has become extremely, extremely tiresome here on this platform because this is not about free speech. This is not even about a liberalism, a democracy. No, this is a dictatorship, a digital dictatorship that wants to push a certain agenda and anything that goes against it will be censored, will be deleted, will be demonetized, shadow banned and whatnot. Therefore, please, yet again, do me the favor, subscribe to my Rumble. This is where the future is, at least for now. No, I don't have any false hopes that Rumble is 
Windows or Salvation, but at least it is a bit less censored than YouTube is. So please head over there, subscribe, and subscribe to my Telegram group as well so we can stay in touch. All right, guys, with this said for today's video, if you liked it, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below. And one more thing, check out my link to Dawagram. Dawagram is the only halal social media platform. Please check it out. I believe that this is where the future of Islamic content lies. All right, guys, and this said for today's video. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.